In middle school, I had to do papers on Greek myth, you know, instead of learning how to survive in the real world. So I decided to lean into this system and make a list of the top 10 strongest Greek gods in the pantheon. Number 10, Hermes. He is the god of commerce, travel, and cunning, acting as a mailman for the gods. But don't mistake him as a postage guy, because he can lay down his hands if needed. His speed and intelligence make him a valuable messenger and mediator among the gods, meaning he could give his opponents some nasty combinations before they even realize it. He's also associated with luck and fortune. Hermes is known for his quick wit and agility. One of his most famous feats is his invention of the lyre, using a tortoise shell, which he gave to Apollo. He also guided the souls of the dead to the underworld. Number 9. Aphrodite, goddess of love, beauty, pleasure, and procreation, her unmatched beauty and power over love and desire give her considerable influence over both mortals and immortals alike, making beta males obey her every will. Apparently, she also has the power to break hearts. Condolences out to my boy Hephaestus. Aphrodite's most famous tale involves the judgment of Paris, where she bribed Paris with the promise of the most beautiful woman in the world, Helen of Troy, in exchange for choosing her as the most beautiful goddess. Guess who's up next? Number 8 is Hephaestus. Being the god of fire, blacksmiths, craftsmen, and volcanoes, his mastery of fire and metalworking make him indispensable among the gods. His cunning intellect aids him in crafting ingenious inventions. Sadly, his craftsmanship is not able to fix that busted up face he has. Hephaestus is renowned for his craftsmanship, particularly in creating weapons and armor for the gods, including Zeus's lightning bolts and Achilles' armor. Despite being born lame, he still became one of the most skilled artisans. Number 7, Artemis. Goddess of the hunt, wilderness, childbirth, and virginity, her unparalleled prowess in hunting and her independence make her a formidable and respected deity among both gods and mortals. One of Artemis' most famous feats is her defense of her virginity and her fierce protection of women and children. She is also known for her skill in archery and her association with the moon. I don't want to offend anyone, but I really feel like the people of LA need her right about now. Number 6, Ares. Being the god of war, violence, and bloodshed, it is no surprise that he has a reckless attitude towards life. Ares' raw power and ferocity make him a force to be reckoned with on the battlefield. Ares' most notable stories usually include him joining battles on the side of one combatant or another, reveling in the chaos and destruction. However, he is often depicted as reckless and easily defeated. He switches sides like Durant, but loses in the end like Embiid. Number 5. Apollo God of poetry, music, art, prophecy, healing, plague, and the sun? How many things can this guy be the god of? Apollo's abilities include prophecy, plaguing, and healing, coupled with his association with the sun, making him a powerful and revered deity. And I mean, of course it does, because everyone knows not to look at the sun for too long, no one wants to be sick, and not to piss off the person that can heal you. Apollo's most famous feat is slaying Python, a monstrous serpent to establish his oracle at Delphi. He's also known for his musical prowess, particularly with the lyre. What is this guy not good at? Next thing you know, he's over six foot and has a drake-sized peat. Number four, Hades. Being the god of the underworld, death, and the afterlife, Hades has full control over the realm of the dead, and his impartiality and judgment make him a feared and respected figure among both gods and mortals. Hades' most significant act is his abduction of Persephone, which led to her becoming queen of the underworld. He's also known for his role as a judge of the dead and for maintaining balance in the underworld. Number 3. Athena. Goddess of wisdom, warfare, strategy, and crafts, Athena's unmatched wisdom, strategic prowess, and skill in warfare make her a formidable deity, revered by both gods and mortals alike. I was thinking about making a sexist joke here, but I voted against it. Athena's most significant myth involves her birth from Zeus's head, fully grown and armored. Okay, she's also known for her role as a protector of cities, particularly Athens, and for her strategic counsel in times of war. Number 2. Zeus Now you may be wondering, why is the king of the gods, god of the sky, lightning, thunder, law, and order, not at the top? And honestly, I don't know. A lot of people in articles put Poseidon above Zeus, but I'm pretty sure you could swap them out from time to time. Zeus's authority as king of the gods, coupled with his control over the sky and thunderbolts, make him a very powerful and influential deity in the Greek pantheon. Zeus's most notable feats include overthrowing his father Cronus to become king of the gods, and defeating the titans in the Titanomachy. He's also known for his numerous romantic escapades, with his ability to f- 
Have fun, and for his role in enforcing divine law, number one, Poseidon, god of the sea, earthquakes, and storms, and and horses. Wait, why do they have a god specifically for horses? Anyways, Poseidon's dominion over the seas and his ability to cause earthquakes and storms make him a force to be reckoned with. His power over the oceans also grants him considerable influence over maritime affairs and travel. I also learned that Zeus, Poseidon, and Hades drew lots to decide which parts of the world each would rule over. So I guess anyone had a chance to be the god of gods. But I bet Zeus probably did something to sway his chances. You know, according to his track record. Poseidon's most famous myth involves his rivalry with Athena for the patronage of Athens, which, which he lost when Athena gifted the city the olive tree. He's also known for his role in creating horses and his temperamental nature, hence tsunamis, which to me is a tiny bit scarier than lightning. I really enjoyed looking at some of the stories and myths of Greek culture for you guys. You know what? Maybe reading Percy Jackson wasn't a waste of time. Hold up, I just have to do taxes real quick. Oh, oh no. Never mind, still useless. Anyway, if you enjoyed watching, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in another episode.